Happiest Season was directed by Clea Duvall and co-written by her and Mary Holland, who also stars in the film. It's currently on Hulu, and it's my first Christmas movie this year. I always try to wait a little bit after Halloween, because I, I, I love Halloween so much that I have to, like, come off of it. You know what I mean? I get so excited about Halloween, and then once it's over, I get kind of depressed for a second, and I'm like, all right, Halloween's officially over. Let's move on. There's other stuff in the world. God damn it. This film stars Kristen Stewart and Mackenzie Davis as Abby and Harper. They're a couple that's going home to meet Harper's parents for the first time. Along the way, Abby realizes that Harper has not come out to her parents, and so they have to pretend like they're just roommates, until she feels she's ready to come out to her parents, who she's afraid will not be very acceptive of this. When it comes to a Christmas romantic comedy, I have to really be in the mood. There's tons of Hallmark movies or Lifetime Channel movies that are just kind of embarrassing, and there are some that are actually not too terrible, but they all follow a very similar formula, and I have to really feel like watching them. Where I can watch a movie that takes place on Halloween all year, I have to be in the mood for a Christmas movie, and especially a Christmas rom-com. When it comes to Happiest Season, I wanted to see it mostly because I love Kristen Stewart and because I've always really liked Claire Duvall, and I wanted to see what she did behind the camera. This is not her first film, this is her second, and she understood something that I think is extremely important when it comes to this movie, and she pulled it off so well that I feel like the majority of people aren't even going to notice. When a director or a writer or an actor or anybody really of talent is able to make something look really easy, it probably wasn't. And what she did so well is make this movie fun. Why is that so amazing? Well, it's because this could have been a very depressing, raw, and real movie about a family that's not acceptive about a daughter that's telling them that she's gay. This movie could easily have gone in a different direction, one that would feel very important and would feel very relevant and extremely emotional. And while the movie certainly has its moments that are emotional in that way, this film retains its fun feeling. It retains a welcoming feeling. It's a movie that really anybody can watch and enjoy and have a good time and not feel sad when it's over. Because I think we've all seen movies about people who haven't been able to express to their family or friends their real selves because they're afraid what would happen if they did that. And sometimes, although it can be really empowering to watch a movie like that, it's really depressing. Happiest Season is a blast all the way through. It's really funny, and it's a really enjoyable movie. And that in itself is a feat to be praised, because the subject matter could potentially be extremely serious and heavy-handed. But they found a great way to honor that subject matter, while also just being a fun Christmas movie that you can enjoy year after year. It's well acted across the board. Kristen Stewart and Mackenzie Davis are super charming in the movie. Daniel Levy is goddamn fucking hilarious in the movie and easily a standout. I laughed at just about everything he says. He's got this hilarious bit throughout the movie where he just says he's tracking everyone on his cell phone. Like he's got some kind of app and he's got all of his friends hooked into it and he's just, he's always tracking them. He knows where they are and he really can't take care of fish. And he just has a great comedic presence throughout the entire film that really, really gave the movie a lot of levity. But the film is very formulaic. You can basically predict how things will go. There's some not so subtle imagery like Kristen Stewart's character literally hiding in a closet at one point. The film has quite a bit of cliches and tropes of the genre like characters just meeting on the street constantly or outside of a party that need to talk who just so happen to be in the same place at the same time. It's a bit of movie logic. If someone is carrying something large, heavy, possibly expensive, or very valuable or personal, odds are it's probably gonna be broken in the next scene and it's gonna be very embarrassing. Films like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner or Meet the Parents, I think, probably had some inspiration here. Meet the Parents being very similar in its beat-by-beat -beat execution. It's not a copy of that film by any means. It's just that if you've seen that movie, you can probably see where things are going. It's somebody who would really like to get engaged to their significant other, and they have to meet a family that ends up being kind of fucking weird, and they're keeping a lot of secrets as well, and it's a long series of embarrassing comedy and hilarity that ensues. It's just that this one has a twist that these two characters are in a relationship, and they're hiding that. So that gives the movie a, a considerable emotional weight that Meet the Parents just doesn't have. So if you know what you're getting into with a movie like Happiest Season, you're probably going to enjoy it. If you already wanted to see this movie, you're probably going to enjoy it. Nothing I'm going to say is going to deter you from that. It's a perfectly enjoyable Christmas movie that has, I think, an, an important spin on things that could inspire a lot of people. And 
that's awesome. Also, there's one thing about this film that I found extremely funny, and it's only going to be funny to you if you know about Cleo Duvall's filmography and her role in the movie The Faculty, in which she starred opposite Josh Hartnett, because one of the characters has a picture of Josh Hartnett in their room, and they just sort of gawk at the poster and talk about how hot he is. And I was like, faculty love! Yes, that's what I needed. Thank you, Claire Duvall. So even though the film is very formulaic and you can basically see where it's going, everyone wears green and yellow and red and it's perfect Christmas color scheme and it all feels like everything's in the right place. It's something you've seen before. It's all done extremely well, and I've said this many times in my videos, you can have a film that's filled with cliches or tropes or feels very familiar. If it's done well, those things are almost always going to work. If you have the right talent assembled in your movie and that comes down to casting, it's going to work. And this movie is cast wonderfully. All the actors are really good in the movie, especially Mary Holland as the sister in this family that is least appreciated. She gets a few really great scenes and she co-wrote the movie as well, which is really impressive. I had a good time with this film and I think that a lot of people are gonna really love it. I'm gonna give Happiest Season a B plus. It was exactly what I wanted it to be and nothing more. It gave me what I wanted. It was funny, it was lighthearted. And I must reiterate that despite its serious subject matter and how important and relevant this story is, it was able to be breezy and enjoyable to watch. It reminded me of the movie Love, Simon, which also was a very important movie kind of groundbreaking actually, that was very fun to watch and extremely accessible. Nobody fucking talks about Love, Simon anymore for some reason. It was really good. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Also, Happiest Season. It's on Hulu. Check that one out too. It's good. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.